Now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of the Jews believed, as did a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. Amen. My soul shall return to the word. My soul shall return to the word. My soul shall return to the word. Gracious God our Father, on this holy day of the Lord, we have gathered to serve your name as we worship you. We thank you for gathering us to worship you. We pray that we who have received your great grace and love, and as we have gathered before you as the Sangak people, we pray that we may worship you with all sincerity and truthfulness. We pray that you would accept this worship. We pray that our, that since we cannot do this by our own strength and our own 
will we pray we may be filled with the holy spirit we pray we may give you a worship that you are most pleased with and that you accept in the name of jesus christ we pray amen our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We pray, uh, we must pray in repentance to the Lord 
and uh, give our sure confession of our sins and faults before the Lord. Let us confess that let us confess that we have been weak before the Lord and we should ask that we can overcome our weaknesses in earnest repentance to the Lord. Now let us all repent earnestly to the Lord now. Amen. Holy God our Father, according to your holy and gracious word and by the regeneration of the Holy Spirit, we, your Sangwak people, have been gathered before you to worship you. We pray 
that we may worship you in spirit and in truth we pray that you would accept this worship and in this worship we pray that you'd walk inside us and we pray that through your word and through your great joy and through your peace and through your fullness we may all be sanctified Sangwak people and Berians as you guide us and lead us through this worship what well, we honestly pray to you our father concerning our beloved overseer pastor Kiron Kim whom we have chosen to lead the barrier movement by great inspiration and since you have chosen this church Sangwak church as the mother to lead this movement we pray that you would help us we pray that many churches and many peoples may come to know the picture of God's will that they may know this message and may understand it and may further grasp it as they lead their lives of spiritual faith we pray that you would fulfill all these things by your great love and by your spirit and concerning those those parties who are causing great tr trouble against this church to divide us and cause us trouble we pray they may not prevail but we pray that the body of the Lord which has been purchased by the blood of God that we all your saints may continue to abide in you and not fall away we pray that you would drive away all the spiritual forces of evil we pray that not one soul will not be deceived and fall away but will and will not become corrupt back into the world but we pray that they may all obey your holy word as your sanctified Sangwak people and we pray for the sake of the overseer whom you have appointed to preach your word we pray we, he may have the wisdom and knowledge and power and inspiration to 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 guide us during all this time that he may lack no good thing before you as he does your works we pray that you lead him by the holy spirit we pray that he may be filled with the holy spirit and be strong in his body that the overseer might preach your word with double portion of inspiration we pray he may preach the word with the fullness and power of the holy spirit we pray we may all hear and understand this word and be changed in our spirits and that we may all understand the holy duty and calling from you that we must fulfill we pray we may have a double portion of inspiration to know what duties we must fulfill with your great power what we honestly ask of you Holy Father is that since you have since you have permitted this holy and gracious time we pray that by your great grace and love that we may receive this grace and love and that this church will revive that have a revival and continue to perform your great works what we honestly ask of you Holy Father is that this church may overcome all financial difficulties and may solve all these difficulties and that you would be with us in these challenges and that you would help us and assist us in all these issues and we pray that we as your Sangwak people that might overcome all these challenges may gather together in great strength may gather together in strength with the courage you give us and that we may come to you in repentance and we pray until the end of this worship we pray that we may prosper in our spirits and you may help us to succeed in all the ways of our spiritual works this is what we honestly pray we pray that you may be with us all the way we pray in the name of Jesus Christ amen
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen.
성령 충만 성령 충만 성령 충만 성령 충만 성령 충만 성령 충만 할렐루야 할렐루야 let us all greet each other and welcome each other during this time. Holy God, our Father, on this holy day of the Lord, we pray that we, your beloved people, who have gathered before you to give our honest offerings to you, we pray for those who have given their holy construction offerings that they that they may be blessed in their spirits by you and we pray for those who have given their mission offerings that you would make them prosper in their spirits and in the spirits of their family members we pray that you bless them all they have given their thanks by by confession by giving you these offerings we pray for all these family members that since they have given their tithes and they have recognized that their possessions belong to you, we pray that you remember every one of these families in their spirits, that you give all your grace and blessings to them in their spirits as they have done these giving of offerings. They have done these things for the livelihood of the body of the Lord there have been many families who have offered and given their thanks. We pray that you remember all of their offerings and make them prosper in their spirits and in all the works of their hands. We pray that you would in person walk upon them by all your grace and blessings. To all those people and the spirits of their families who do, who do know and do have inspiration enough to confess themselves towards you to all those who have given their thanksgiving offerings we pray that you'd be with them and help them to all those families who have given their offerings we pray that you'd help them we pray that you give your great glory we pray they may receive all your good spiritual benefits as you work upon their spirits in the name of Jesus Christ we pray amen May all those who have given their holy offerings to the Lord, may they be blessed in their spirits, in the name of Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Yes, Lord. 
The Word of God is found in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 to 23. The Word of God is found in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 to 23. Let us read it together. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Amen. So that we can hear the word of God, let us pray honestly to the Lord. Let us pray for the sake of the servant of the Lord that he may be strong in his body that he may be strong in his flesh and to us who receive the word of God that we may receive it in great inspiration now, now let us pray earnestly to the Lord Holy God the Father, on this holy day of the Lord, if there have been many who have recently fallen into temptation and have bowed down to idols, we pray that you would forgive them. We pray that during this time that you would sanctify them and that you would forgive them and that you would lay a hold of them and that we may be all filled with the Holy Spirit as we hear this word. We pray you would help us. We pray that you would empower the lips of your servant that he may preach the word that you desire. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The fruit of the good tree. Let us read together the sermon outline. God is the God of justice. He judges the world with justice. The world has both good fruit and bad fruit. A good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. The law bears bad fruit, while the gospel bears good fruit. Bad fruit is to condemn. Good fruit is to love. You can tell if a tree is good or bad by its fruit. What kind of fruit must we bear? If you hold to the law, you cannot bear good fruit. If you dwell in grace, you cannot bear bad fruit. You cannot discern a tree by its fruit. What kind of fruit did you bear until now? Was it good fruit or was it bad fruit? You are not a good tree because you shout, Lord, Lord. A good tree will do God's will. Let us all become good trees and bear good fruit. Let us bear good fruit according to God's will. Only by the Holy Spirit will you bear good fruit. 
Give glory to the kingdom of Jesus. This is good fruit. A good tree will fulfill God's will. By their fruit will you know them. You must dwell with the Lord Jesus to bear good fruit. Our church is a good tree. Let us bear many good fruits and give glory to God. God is the God of justice. So when we talk about justice, we are talking about that which does not stumble, which does not stumble, just as God does not stumble, because He is eternal and He is steadfast. We are talking about the godly and steadfast law of God. We are talking about the heavenly principle. So people look at their outward appearance and judge them by what they see. And they judge what is good and bad. But God does not do these things. But according to His law, according to His justice, God so gives His judgment. There will be the judgment on the last day when He gives His judgment with justice, so He will judge the world with justice. So we have a president in South Korea, and the previous president from now was evicted because she had a broken some constitutional laws and so we see that there is a need for even the president to keep the constitution for if the president does not keep the constitution even he cannot remain in office if a president cannot keep the constitution that person will have to be evicted and judged according to that constitution so it's such is the same with God's law, with His justice. God has given His commandments and by His commandment He had said, you will surely die. And this word became uh, the standard of justice and no one can, no one can alter it or do anything about it or say anything about it. If God, if God was to remove the sin that He Himself had defined, then He Himself would have to sacrifice Himself. So this is why God had sent His own Son and had sent Him to die. So this is how stern and frightening justice is, how frightening the justice of God is. God has a fearful and stern justice that not even God can cancel, not even God can escape. Because this is the justice that God Himself has sworn by, has sworn upon. This is the official and stern justice of God. So even if God so loves, even if God loves, He cannot escape His own justice. Because God swore by His own oath upon this justice, if He Himself, if He Himself cannot sort this problem out, there is no way to cancel it. As it says in the book of Numbers, God is not a man that He changes His mind or that He lies. What He says He will surely bring to fulfillment. And this is why, concerning his only begotten and beloved son, he had sent him to die. So if God did not have the heart to save mankind, there would be no need for him to do it. If he had no desire or will to save mankind, there was no need to send his only begotten son to die. But he had a desire and will to save mankind and accordance to this will, to fulfill this will, 
in accordance with this justice, he had to fulfill this justice. This is why he had sent his only begotten son to die on the cross. So even the son, even the son cannot escape the justice of God. So by this, by this justice by which God will give his own judgment, no one can run away from this. So all the biological creatures on this earth will disappear. However, spiritual beings, spiritual beings, whether they are demons or humans, so all spiritual beings cannot escape the judgment of God. And God will deal all these matters according to His justice and finally throw them into the lake of fire, the fire of sulfur. There is no emotions or mercy on this issue, but there is only the stern justice of God. So that God would eternally preserve us so by all necessary means to fulfill this conditions and requirements so that he could preserve us what did God do he justified us God justified us and this is the justice of God if God has justified someone then not even the angels of heaven not even any authority can ever can ever cause trouble for those he has justified if god has justified something by his own justice then then that person will live so god has given us faith god has enabled us to have faith and if we have faith, this is the faith of God, which comes from God, and it does not come from our own ideas, our own conviction. So that, that revealed word, that revealed faith, this faith is revealed and is given to us. This is not the faith that comes from the heart of man, but that which is revealed by God, which comes from heaven and revealed by God and enters into us, into our spirits. And this revealed faith from God will justify our spirits and then we will be considered justified before God. And this justification by faith is even greater than the law, more stronger than the law. So no matter how much the law judges us, it cannot do anything before those whom God has justified. And God has sworn upon His Son on these matters. So within our spirits, God has given His faith and this faith from God must enter into our spirits so your own ideas or your own thought or faith cannot save you on the day of judgment so that we will not perish God had given us faith and so it says God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life they will not perish but have eternal life so we do not live our life of faith to pursue religious discipline or some religious ideals so there are some people there were some people 
many people who pursue ethics and morals, but there is no one on this earth who has not sinned. We have all coveted, we have all hated each other, we have all lusted in our hearts, we have all committed murder, we have all hated each other or committed theft. Even if we have not done these in action, we have done this within our hearts. So we commit sins every day. There is not one person who does not do this. In order to give us life, God had given us faith. He has, God had no choice but to give us faith and no other method. And the gospel was preached to give this faith and this gospel preaches faith. So whoever believes, to those who believe, then they will receive baptism in the name of Jesus. They will receive baptism by immersion in the name of Jesus. Uh, John the Baptist gave baptism in immersion by water. But John said, I give baptism in immersion by water, but someone will come after me and he will give you baptism in immersion by the Holy Spirit and by water. And after I have gone back to the Father, you will baptize, you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit and water. So this is the baptism by Jesus and the baptism given by John. This is the difference between them. So John gave baptism by water, but Jesus gave baptism by spirit. We cannot ever hope to receive baptism in spirit until Jesus ascend to the Father. For this is only the experience in the water by water in the physical experience and nothing else, nothing more. And you, uh, in the past, we only experienced by physical experience in water and this was done in the past, but now, through Jesus, we experience this in water and we experience this by the Holy Spirit within our spirits. We experience both the water and then through the Holy Spirit in our spirits. So in the baptism of the past, we received baptism in water and we understood we were sinners. But we did not experience the baptism by the Holy Spirit and we cannot uh, hope to be saved. So when we are baptized in the water, we experience, we experience this in our bodies by the water and we, and, uh, we are united with Jesus Christ. And so we are united with Jesus Christ by, by experiencing baptism in the Holy Spirit. So it is both the experience of the water and the Holy Spirit. And I will continue to explain about these. So baptism in immersion is, the connect, is a method of connection by which we can connect with God. How can we ever connect with God? So God had sent Jesus Christ and how can we connect with Jesus and dwell in Jesus? We receive baptism by immersion in the water. And, and we are connected and united with Jesus who died on the cross in his flesh. And we receive baptism in immersion by the Holy Spirit. And we are also united with Jesus who rose from the dead. How do we enter into Jesus? How do we dwell in Jesus? Through baptism in immersion. And so our body enters into the water. Our body enters into the water just like it was done in the past by John the Baptist. So we confess that we are sinners. But not only is this so, but when we come out of the water, this is done through the Holy Spirit and we confirm 
by experience when we come out of the water that we are united with the resurrected Jesus and this is how the union is done just as just as the people of Israel entered into the water of the Red Sea and then became fully the people of God so it is the same with baptism and the family of and the family of Noah uh, survived after entering into the ark and passing through the flood and after after the the gates were closed in the ark there were eight in they were eight in all that were saved that was the family of Noah in the ark everyone outside of the ark had died but those who were entered into the ark after the the rain floods the floods of rain then they were saved and this is symbolizing baptism in immersion so if we treat our baptism in immersion of little value they can we can find no salvation because it is only in faith and we and we give baptism in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit which is Jesus and so the baptism in immersion is done only once in your life we cannot do this twice we cannot ever do this twice but only once if we have to do this twice then somebody would have to shed blood twice and if you have any feeling of regret on these matters then you will eternally regret it it must be done once it must be done once when we are officially transferred from death over to life only once and this is the the method of transfer by which we are transferred from death over to life and we have received baptism and immersion and we have been made justified we have been justified we are no longer sinners but we are justified we are those who are justified so what is justification it is life and peace it is life and peace <clears throat> there is peace and life this this is the fruit of righteousness so the fruit that comes from sinners what is the fruit that comes from sinners curses and anxiety and sin and curses and punishment and death in order to in order to avoid this death and destruction we believe in Jesus so the issue is the issue is who do you belong to where do you belong to if you do not belong to Jesus if you do not belong to Jesus you have no life and peace you have no eternal life but if you belong to Moses if you belong to Moses indeed the law of Moses came from God but this was the vessel which gave condemnation and curses the law had come after we were sinners not before we were sinners we were already sinners when the law came and if but if we belong to the law of Moses if we belong to Moses we are sinners and we must be punished and go to hell and be destroyed in our spirits so which tree do you belong to which tree do you belong to the good tree or the bad tree so this is what the Bible passage we are concentrating on is all about about the good tree and the bad tree 
So we think about the good tree as having a good life, having a good conscience, a good life, good, good deeds, an exemplary deeds and life. And this is what we think that good fruit is, that your life is kind, that your heart is kind and gentle, is very good, out of the appearance of goodness. This is what people think that good, that a good tree is. So, most Christian books that are published are all about this. And they think that bad fruit is when you hate each other and covet each other and despise each other. And although this may, some of this may be right, but this is all about judging between good and evil, man's judgment of good and evil. So the law, the law is the faculty and the ability to judge between good and evil. So the Israelites, the people of Israel, had come out of the des had come out of had come out of Egypt. They had come out of the desert, had lived in Egypt for a while, and now they were well trained in judging between good and evil. And although the law, although the law, even if the law may not be given to other peoples, they already have their moral conscience within their flesh, which naturally and automatically judges between good and evil, judging between whether this action or situation is good or evil, and judge be judging between the two. This is natural to all, even if the law of Moses does not come. So when you are a child, when you are a baby, you do not develop the ability to judge between good and evil. You do not have the wisdom for it. But as you grow in your age and you become more experienced, and then you grow old and you are slower in the pace of your life, and uh, you are more able to judge between good and evil, and you have more knowledge of judging between issues of good and evil. Oh, this situation is this, this situation is that, this is good and this is that. So, although the, although, even the Bible states that although a child is not able to judge between good and evil, but those who have constantly trained in the food of righteousness can now judge between matters of good and evil. So even the Bible talks about this. And so, so before we ate of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, we did not know the ability to judge between good and evil. But this is not necessarily good. This ability is not necessarily uh, productive, for this can often result in lies. We were already dead in Adam. So if you have sinned but you did not know about it, this is not... You might think that this is not sin and you just... You are only guilty of sin by what you know. This is what you might naturally think. So even in issues of med medicine, just because you didn't, just because you didn't know, just because you didn't know that you, what you were eating was a medicine, would the which you escape the effects? Even though you know and you eat the wrong medication, you will die. And even though you do not know you eat the wrong medication, you will still die. So it does not matter whether you know or do not know. And so when you, when you are eating, for example, you're eating your breakfast, you might know by reading you might know by reading the box, the, the nutritional details, whether something has this much of cholesterols or fat or carbohydrates and so on. But most people, they do not even read it. As long as they can put it into their mouth, they will put it in. And it is the same thing. Even before, even if we did not know about the state of sin, we are still sinners. 
even if we did not know about it. So, so before we did not know how to judge between good and evil, but now that we have grown older and more experienced, we will have the habit of judging between good and evil. And, and and then some people, some people will lead a religious life, will pers will choose a religion and try to solve this e solve this issue between because of this issue of judging of good and evil. But this cannot even save the soul. Now Galatians chapter five, Galatians chapter five. <laughs> Now let us read it together. Galatians chapter 5, verse 4. With a loud voice, let us all say it together with a loud and clear voice. Verse 4. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have been fallen away from grace. Let us read it together. Galatians chapter 5 verse 4. You are trying to be justified by the law. I've been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. And so, some people who pursue to be righteous by the law, that is, by their moral conscience, they will fall away from grace. They are trying to be justified by the law that is by their moral conscience within them and not from the grace of Christ. They have fallen away from Christ and fallen away from grace. They have been alienated from Christ and fallen away from grace. They are those who do not have grace. They are those who have rejected grace. They have nothing to do with Christ. This is like being cut off from cut off from the nourishing tree. This is being cut off from the life-giving tree. You have nothing to do with this good tree any longer. And so it is by in another Bible passage, by the Spirit we have hope through faith in Jesus Christ. So, and yet this is completely different if we try to be justified by the law, by our own moral conscience which judges between good and evil in accordance with man's standards. This is the fleshly conscience of moral issues which, which man uses to judge this situation and that situation to judge by man's standards to see if this is right or this situation is wrong or this deed is right and wrong and so on. They will judge themselves and judge others by moral issues of good and evil and it results in condemnation and guilt. And even though they may joke and, and speak ill about others in accordance with moral issues, they themselves will be very guilty as well. They are those who have fallen away from grace. So the issue is, where do you belong to? Which tree do you belong to? So the good tree, the good tree belongs to those who belong to Jesus Christ. But the bad tree belong, means that you belong to the law. So Jesus Christ did not come to give us methods for improving our morality. Jesus said, I came not to do my will, but to do the will of the Father who sent me. I came not to do my will, but to do the will of the Father who sent me. And this is eternal life. This is to be saved and gain eternal life. And this is the will of the Father. Jesus had come to give salvation to mankind. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe in this? If you believe, you will live. And if you live and believe in me, you will live forever. Do you believe in this? I came not to be served. I came not to accuse you of doing evil or good or to serve. 
uh, for you to serve me. I did not come for you to serve me. I came to give you life. I came, I came to give you life so that you can live. Because you have no way to live, I have came to serve you. I have come with an honest and warm-hearted spirit to give you life, to fill you up so that you can feed on my flesh and my blood. So when Jesus was doing his public ministry of three years, and he had done his ministry until he had died on the cross, and this this has started ever since he had received baptism in immersion in the Jordan River and then he had continued his ministry and in one place in one place he had healed in one place he had performed miracles and in that final place he had died on the cross so the situ the situational details were different but it is all the same in that Jesus Christ was suffering and putting the suffering upon his body and this was no this involved no peace this had no peace in the ministry of Jesus for he had come to save mankind and why was this because of the law of Moses because of the law of Moses which had judged the people of Israel and even if even if the law was not there a moral conscience would have eaten up in condemnation the whole of mankind and Jesus Christ had come to save all of these to all mankind whether they have the law or not so what was the first deed Jesus had done to die on the cross and why did Jesus die and so the law is that which gives sin it 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 produces the effect of sin and Jesus had come to break down the wall of sin this is why Jesus had come to to break the stern wall of sin to fulfill all its requirements and to put it on his own body he had fulfilled all these requirements of the law onto his own body and transferred it all so Jesus had died on the cross let us say it together Jesus had died on the cross why so that the law will be destroyed but the law within you is is alive the conscience within you is al is alive and well functioning it continues to judge between good and evil it continues to judge on moral matters judging on matters of good and evil you judge about this you contend about that you keep judging between matters of good and evil you still do this and yet this does not have anything to do with whether you say Lord Lord or not so this is what the Bible passage we are concentrating on is saying and so consider the false prophets for they will wear sheep's clothing but inside they are outward wolves and so by their fruits you will recognize them can good fruit ever bear can good fruit ever be born by a bad tree and a bad tree bear good fruit and uh, these false prophets are among us and working very hard so as was is written in Galatians chapter 5 verse 4 so you are trying to be justified by the law if you do this you are alienated from Christ and you have fallen away from grace and why is this because what is the fruit what is the fruit of sin and this is found in 1st Corinthians chapter 15 verse 56 1st Corinthians chapter 15 verse 56 1st Corinthians chapter 15 verse 56 the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law so if we can put it another way so what is the power of the law it is sin so what is the sting of sin it is death 
So that juice, that, that juice of the law is sin and death. That power of the law is sin and death. So you who want to be under the law, do you not know that you are under a curse? This is what Paul has written to us in Galatians. And religious people do not live by grace. They live to pursue the cultivating of their moral conscience, which only, which is only uh, judging between matters of good and evil, only to pursue living a good life. But who will ever save their soul, their spirit? Who will give salvation to their spirit? How can their spirit be saved? Who will give it redemption? Who will give it re salvation? They have no salvation. They have no blood of Jesus. So if your whole life you pursue a good religious life, you may have some good deeds. You may have performed a good life, but there is no salvation in their spirits. So, John chapter 1 verse 17, let us read it together. John chapter 1 verse 17. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. This is found in John chapter 1 verse 17. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So Moses was considered the savior for the people of Israel and to take them out of Egypt. But they cannot go into the kingdom of God. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth only comes through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth only comes through Jesus Christ. So which tree are you? Are you the tree which takes the root in the grace of Jesus Christ, which takes root in the gospel? Are you the, the tree which belongs to grace and truth and bear the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of grace, the fruit of peace and life are you this kind of tree or are you the tree which bear which are uh, bears root in the law of moses and which bears the root in the law of moses and only bears fruit which judges between good and evil which constantly judges and condemns are you this kind of fruit so the issue is, are you going to bear fruit into destruction or bear fruit into, into righteousness? So the power of the law is sin and condemnation. But the fruit, the fruit of righteousness is life and resurrection. So you do not know the truth and that is why you are chosen for destruction. Jesus said, I am the truth. Come to me for I am the truth. I am life and the truth. So come to me. This is what Jesus says to us. So within your heart, within your heart, if you, if you only have the decision and the idea to, to live a good so-called moral life, you do not take sides in the church, you do not support your elder, your pastor, your overseer, and you think that this is morally good by being impartial and not taking sides? What does the Bible say? If the shepherd is killed, then the sheep will be completely scattered. I do not know how long I will live. But this is a most important time, and I seek to preach to you the truth while I am here. So are you a good tree or a bad tree? So if you are a good tree, 
Let us read it together in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Matthew 7, verse 24 to 27. Verse 24 onwards to 27. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain came down, the stream rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. It did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So you may... You may be diligent in your works of service. You may, on outward appearance, be doing very diligently. But if you are judging between matters of good and evil, criticizing matters of the church and, and ministers of the church, and others hear and they fall for these lies, then they will all be scattered and fall to the floor. In one moment, they will all be swept away. So the good tree, so the fruit of the bad tree will only be designated to surely be swept away and completely disappear. So the fruit of judging between good and evil, those who judge between good and evil, they will stumble immediately. Why? Because they are instantly insulted of any small matter of the church and they are instantly stumbling. So we must receive grace. Please receive grace. Receive grace. So when you are young, you do not know about this. And you will constantly judge whether this situation is right or this situation is wrong. Some people bring their Bibles to church, but they do not even know about what these situations are, and they do not know anything about the Bible. Do they pray? Do they spend their life, their lifetime praying in zeal? This is, these are, this is the question. So they criticize about their pastor, their minister, their deacons. They are constantly judging between matters of good and evil. It is like they are under the law and they hold to those, hold to those issues of moral conscience. And they are those who have been alienated from Jesus Christ and fallen away from grace. They are those who have fallen away from grace. In, so, we, we must receive grace in order not to fall away. We can see, receive this grace freely. And some people will hear this and say, Oh, it is, not that e it is not that hard to believe in Jesus. Indeed, it is not hard to believe in Jesus and receive grace. And then you will say, So, so can that evil person that I know in church, can, he be sa can that person be saved? Or can that evil doer be saved? Or can a prostitute be saved? Yes, they can. They can all be saved. But those Pharisees who, who think themselves as righteous and judge between matters of good and evil and condemn, they will be destroyed. So which tree are you? Which tree are you? Which tree do you belong to? Do you belong to the tree of the truth? Do you belong to Jesus? Do you belong to Jesus? Do you belong to the grapefruit, the, the vine? Do you belong to the vine? You must receive grace. You must receive God's grace. Please receive God's grace. Please receive God's grace. This is the righteousness of Jesus. This is, this is not your own righteousness, the righteousness of man. This is the righteousness of Jesus. And man, man are judged by their own standards and keep on condemning, even condemn their pastors. 
The issue is whose righteousness do you possess? So the word is the word of eternal life. What is the name of Jesus? The name of Jesus is the name of the word of God. So if you believe in this name, you receive the authority to become children of God. This is not done by the will of man, but done by the will of God. It is God's will, not man's will. So just because you have heard the sermon does not mean you have heard the word of God. The issue is whether you have Jesus in you. Do you have Jesus in you? If the word of God enters inside your spirit, then Jesus himself dwells in your spirit. So what, what do we say when we talk about commandment? It is not just the law that has commandments. And so the Lord says, keep this, keep that. But the result, the only result is that it will produce sin. Your flesh might be justified, but your spirit will not be justified, but will perish. So grace itself is a commandment. If you do not receive grace, you will die, you will perish. Why do people fear the law, but fear do not fear the commandment of grace? Why do not they fear the commandment of grace? If you do not receive grace, you will perish. Why do you not know this? Even if you keep the law with all your heart, you will perish. You will go to hell. If you keep the law, you will have to keep the law again and keep it again and keep it again until the very end. But you will still be under sin and you are those who are under a curse, therefore. You must receive the commandment to receive grace. Obey the commandment to receive His grace. Receive His grace. Be redeemed by Jesus, though you are a wicked sinner, yet you received grace and you are saved. Receive grace and be justified. Receive grace and be justified. So all people must receive grace. They must receive the grace of Jesus Christ. Now let us let us grip, grab our fists. Let us grip our fists and let us say, Oh my soul, receive grace. Oh my soul, receive grace. You must all receive grace. Please receive God's grace. So parents in the family will say to their children, Do not play, do not play with your friends. Do not do this, do not do this. This is good, it only, but it only helps the flesh, but does not help the spirit. All your family members receive, must receive God's grace. Please receive God's grace. The issue is whether you belong to a good tree and bear good fruit or belong to a bad tree and bear bad fruit. So if you belong to the law, you can only bear bad fruit, which is the tree of a curse. But if you receive grace, you belong to the good tree. You are a good tree. You must receive grace. If you do not receive grace, you can only do nothing but keep judging between matters of good and evil and condemn, condemn this and judge about this and that and so on. If you do not receive God's grace, you will die in your spirit. Please uh, receive God's grace. I urge you to receive God's grace. Please receive God's grace. Even though you come to church, you may have an appearance of godliness. You may have appearance of godliness. But I urge you all, instead receive God's grace. Receive God's grace and be justified by the Holy Spirit by receiving grace. Please receive grace. If you receive grace, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. You'll receive powers of the Holy Spirit and, most, and more gifts of the Holy Spirit will come. Why do you seek to remain in the gifts of tongues? Please receive more of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You must perceive, you must believe and be saved. Receive grace, believe and be saved. Now let us all stand up. Let us all stand up. So with every strength in your heart, pray honestly though that the Holy Spirit will work powerfully upon you.
So everyone in your family, everyone in your family must receive grace to live in their spirit. Receive grace to live in your spirit. Do not seek to be justified by the law, but seek to be justified by Christ. Seek to be justified by the blood of Jesus. Seek to be justified by the blood of Jesus. By the merit of the cross of Jesus. By the merit of the cross of Jesus. Try to be justified. We do not seek to be justified by moral issues, but seek to be justified by grace. Live by grace. Live by grace. God the Father, we pray that all Sangrak people and all Sangrak people and all Barians throughout the world will be justified and live by grace. We pray that they may live by grace through God's grace, through God's grace. By God's gracious gift of life, we pray that they may be justified by this. Holy God the Father, we pray that Sangha people may seek not to be justified by moral issues, by matters of good and evil, by matters of the law. For if they follow this, they will be alienated from Christ and fallen away from grace. We pray they may not be alienated from Christ and fall away from grace. We pray they may be justified by the grace of God. We pray they may be justified by the grace of Christ, by the merit of the cross of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Amen. So please, know this truth and sing your praise. 내가 주의 근복을 받는 참된 비결은 주의 영이 함께함이라 네. 성령이 계시네 할렐루야 함께하시네 좁은 길을 걸으며 밤나 기뻐하는 것 주의 영이 함께함이라 전의 죄에 빠져서 평안함이 없을 때 예수 십자가의 공도 힘입어 그발 아래 엎드려 참된 평화 어둠은 주의 영이 함께함이라 성령이 계시네 할렐루야 함께하시네 좁은 길을 걸으며 밤낮 기뻐하는 것 주의 영이 함께함이라 나와 동행하시고 모든 격려하시니 나는 숲의 새와 같이 기쁘다 내가 기쁜 마음으로 주의 뜻을 행함은 주의 영이 함께함이라 성령이 계시네 할렐루야 함께하시네 좁은 길을 걸으며 밤나 기뻐하는 것 주의 영이 함께함이라 세상 모든 정력과 나의 모든 욕망 십자가의 힘이 못을 막았네 어둠 밤이 지나고 무거운 짐 벗으니 주의 영이 함께함이라 성령이 계시네 할렐루야 함께 하시네 좁은 길을 걸으며 밤낮 기뻐하는 주의 영이 함께 하기라 성령이 계시네 할렐루야 함께 하시네 좁은 길을 걸으며 밤낮 기뻐하는 것 주의 영이 함께 하기라 성령이 계시네 할렐루야 함께 하시네 좁은 길을 걸으며 밤낮 기뻐하는 것 주의 영이 함께 하기라
Beloved Songwak people, we as Songwak people must all receive God's grace. We must only rely on God's grace. We must only be justified by the Holy Spirit. Please receive God's grace. Please receive His grace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the great love of God the Father, and the inspiration and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon all those who rely on the Holy Spirit and seek to be justified by the Holy Spirit and all who hear this message throughout the world in their spirits in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So this Berian hymn, this Berian hymn has, has perfectly encapsulated the picture of God's will. Let us sing it while knowing what it means. So, through the name of Jesus, if we are baptized in immersion through the, main of, through the name of Jesus, we know we have received grace. So, we must never depart from this grace. Hallelujah. Let us all encourage each other. Let us receive grace. Let us receive grace. Let us encourage each other to receive God's grace. Thank you very much. <laughs>